measured by social, economic and governance yardsticks, South Africa's performance in the last 12 years slumped by more than any other country not at war, Unomics found in a recent study. Today, after South Africa's crucial general election, Unomics CEO Claude Basak is with us in the studio to outline what South Africa should do to reverse this slump and to put itself on a new upward course that embraces economic inclusivity and jobs. Claude, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa, in an article in the Sunday Times uh, on May the 5th, ahead of the election, said it was time for South Africans to unite behind economic growth and to unite with boldness and with vision. What, in your view, needs to be done to create a South Africa that's got economic growth, that is inclusive and job rich? Firstly, the president is absolutely right. Um, the country needs to unite. And I think this is the key word. So what the country has lost uh, is a, a sense of, of purpose. What is the low-hanging fruit at the moment that can be plucked to get this economy moving in the short term? There are no quick, easy solutions. Now, the president understands that under those circumstances, there are two main levers. There are levers of investment that leads to growth. Growth doesn't manifest itself like that, you know, itself like that. Growth is not a magic, f magic figure that we put on, on, on a yearly or monthly report at the Reserve Bank. Growth is a product of investment multiplied by physical assets and people, right? We have to have people who invest to have growth. We have to have people who consume the things that I've invested in to have growth. How do we create that back? We have to send very strong and unambiguous signal that South Africa is open for business. The president needs to be presidential. You know, we need more competition and we need to be brutal at sanctioning, investigating sanctioning, you know, collusion in markets, you know, Tr uh, tr you know, trust uh, bursting in the markets. Open up the sector to the informal sector, you know, the economy. Allow the vast mass of the African, black, unemployed people a chance to go from informality to formality. It is possible to have a, a market-friendly, you know, economic policy which is social at the same time. You know, and this is, I think, the big problem in South Africa is that there is notion, you know, and it's an ideological notion that is narrated from the exposure to the enormous unfairness of apartheid and colonialism, that market economy, capitalism, mean exploitation, mean exclusion, mean equality. And it does if it is not strongly regulated by a very powerful, capricious state, right? So. Open up the economy right now, let the private sector invest, but, but, but you know, tax them in exchange. So mining. I've always been in favor, as you know, of the resource rent tax. Have the resource rent tax. Super profit, super taxes, super investment in society, in communities. I think the mining industry keeps shooting itself in the foot when it says, we don't want super profit taxes because you know what, we don't make money now. Well, that's what a super profit tax is. When you make money, your tax higher. And that should go back to communities, you know? And that would be actually money saved to the mining industry because they wouldn't have to deal with the permanent state of unrest and misery and poverty and alienation that exist in those communities. It's up to the president to actually take the mantle of very powerful reform and you make sure that you have a framework for environmental, social, health, you know, regulation that is just and fair. We, have a, we then have what we call a social market economy. We need to help the informal sector you know, develop itself, formalized sector. So we need to help the artisanal mining get out of those very dangerous practices, right? And I had a conversation you know, yesterday with the Washington-based institutions about that. You know. Um, you know, can, can they help you know, the, the industry actually start dealing with this in a productive, socially constructive way? Um, let's do that, you know, let's, 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 let's help the informal sector. I mean, massive amount of jobs, massive amount of innovation in there. I mean, the, the population of South Africa is incredibly resilient and incredibly innovative at finding ways to survive. 
Let's help them. You know? Let's, let's find ways to make sure that this population is helped, that the right, they get the right education. And we need to relook at our education. Do we want to make economists and lawyers and out of everybody? Or do we want to give them you know, trade skills so that they can actually rapidly you know, generate income for themselves? Access to finance, access to market, protection against you know, the greedy, you know, I'm not going to call it white monopoly capital because it's not white anymore, but it certainly is monopoly capital in some sectors. You know, protection against that. But also use the greed. Use the greed. Social market um, capitalism is, is, is a very clever way of using the greed and putting clear limitations on that greed for the common good. 55%, 56% of the national vote is nothing to sneeze at. It's called a political victory with a majority in parliament. Use it. What are the sectors that today could really rapidly grow? Tourism. But we are still in uncertainty over all of this regulation that seems to make investment and travel and visit and visas difficult. This is not even a law now. Now we are in administrative you know, matters. The president, the minister of tourism, can then, the Minister of Home Affairs can get together, have a flipping task force, I'm sorry to say flipping task force, you know, in cabinet, and in two or three days come with a decision. Boom, bam, done. Okay, so we want more Chinese tourists. Come up with an uh, easy, cheap Chinese visa. We want more Indian tourists. We want more Middle Eastern tourists. Well, then bring them home, you know? We want them to come with their kids. Well, then simplify this process of allowing children to travel with one parent or traveling in and out of the country. Don't get rid of it, because I think it's a very good measure to protect you know, uh, children against, against the possible risk of, of uh, uh, traffic, parents stealing their kids. Keep it, but m simplify it, clarify it. Have a simple message about it. Communicate it through you know, the, the embassies and the consulates of South Africa. Pass a strong message. You know, that's how I would do it. So mining. Sit down with the, the, with the, with the Chamber of the Mineral Council and come up with some sort of an interim agreement. Make it an interim agreement. And all the stuff that are stuff of disagreement, put them aside and negotiate over them for a while. Identify what the main constraints to immediate growth in sectors that could re result in immediate investment resulting to growth in six months, in a year's time. What will happen out of that, and this is the virtue of growth, as soon as investment starts happening, it signals to other investors that there is business to be done. For the past three, four months, you could hear this economy holding its breath. No spending, no investment, no activities, cus you know, customers, consumers staying away. You could feel it, you could see it. This is because an economy is based on faith and it's based on trust. Give them a few strong signals, have a few regulatory steps that are simple but effective, and you will hear the sound of confidence under the form of consumers consuming again, bank lending again, investors investing again. That's what we need to get started. That's what this president needs to have, and that's what he needs to do. If he does that, then we can start talking about the more long-term structural activities, actions we need to take. The real constraints to growth, education, social capital, health care. What do we do about universal health care, which is an absolutely fundamental human right? How do we go about the more things? How do we come with a, to a new social compact that says we will, the role of the state is to protect all citizens equally. It is to make sure that these citizens, under one mechanism or the other, have freedom, safety, hope, education, opportunity in a system that is not grievously unequal. 
what is the role of the private sector to create investment to take risk in the market to do that by employing capital labor technology etc how we do this in a way that creates revenues that can be taxed that government can then continue to funding you know critical investments and let's get beyond this idiotic exhausted old you know passé debate about capitalist versus marxist versus south africa is better than this we can innovate we can find new form of public private partnerships and we start being at war with one another we work together and if there's one thing south africa has learned from its own history is that in the worst moment it can come together and 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 get to work together this was Mining Weekly Online in conversation with Claude Basak, the CEO of Unomics, a company that offers resilient solutions in the face of uncertainty and disruption.